Bob Proctor just talks a lot about like paradigms and shit like that. A paradigm is like a pattern or a habit and you have to change your paradigms and you like you have to be aware. Like we all go through the day all the time without even being like aware or present and that's something that he helped me out with because even the thoughts going back to like talking about the negative and positive thoughts, the negative thoughts don't serve you any purpose. Like we're just programmed to like let them slide and let them be there. But you can kind of start capturing them. Like start studying your thoughts all the time and listening. Like I don't have to have that thought. Like let me get rid of that and just replace it with a positive one. The only way to change a paradigm is to program it with the opposite. So that's something that I've been aware of lately. Shout out to Bob Proctor. He dedicated his whole life to the law of vibration, law of attraction, all that shit. Welcome back to another episode of Bobcast where I interview outliers who are breaking the mold regardless of the status quo. Today, we have my friend AK40 Devin. Going from working at a pizza parlor for seven years to working with some of the biggest rappers, shooting their music videos, and headlining his own show. Devin has a real come up story uh, starting way back. We dive into a lot of it in this episode. So please enjoy this conversation with my great friend, AK 40 Devin. Two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Bobcast. Today on the show, I have once again, for the second time, AK 40 Devin. How you doing? Yes, sir. What's good, my guy? Hey, man, we're just living, man. Dude, we just made the best fucking song in the world, man. And I hate to, I won't, we won't stay on this point too long because people aren't going to be able to hear the song. Honestly, I mean, I guess it depends. This is going to be out in like a month after this, but yeah, yeah. anyway, you're probably not going to be able to hear the song yet, so we won't go too far, but it was out of my comfort zone, but like f- meaningfully, like I wanted to go out of the comfort zone and you just brought this track and you were like, do you want to do rock and... I said, yeah, let's yeah, try. It was just some rock shit. Shout out to IOF. He produced the beat. And, bro, I don't even be making rock shits like that anyway. But I came here. I have no idea, like, what I was doing. No lyrics written. And this motherfucker just started singing. And I was like, bro, you sound like Adele. And I just wrote these rap lyrics. And now we got a fucking song. It was crazy. I don't sound like Adele, like, in the way that Adele sounds. But I see what you're saying right there. I appreciate the compliment, though. I appreciate the compliment. Bro, it's like, um... When Spongebob, like, brought the band together and, like, they made a jam and, like, all the viewers were like, oh, my God. Like, that was that moment right now. I just got to the studio and he was like, oh. And I was like, yo, you can fucking do that? He's like, I don't even fucking know I could do that. <laughs> to be honest, that is that is 100% what I said and that's how I feel. I didn't I, – I've <laughs> harmonized on melodies before, but, I mean, I've done, like, a lot of, like, breath work and stuff like that. So, like, I can definitely, like – but not recently. I don't know. I haven't thought about it. But yeah, that was the, just crazy, dude. I that's awesome. I I gotta use that for. I gotta actually try to channel that and get better at it. That would be good. Bro, hell yeah! And speaking of that, bro, like, I'm not trying to just like, I don't know. Um, what's his name? Fucking Naval Ravikant. He said on the Joe Rogan podcast, he's like, specialization is for insects. And when he said that, I was like, bro, I could be a fucking. A director, a father, a fucking an artist. I could be a fucking painter. I could be a tattoo artist. I could be an astronaut, bro. There's no limits to this shit. And I think though that people who are like that, who are multi passionate and multi dimensional in the things that they do, I think they also have a standard that ends up being probably higher than most people. Where because if you spend less time on something, if you spend more time on one thing, you're gonna have to spend less time on something else. So even when you do something and spend less time you know maybe for you it's writing and recording videos right but you know that if you spent more time recording videos that week that you have to you'll have less time for writing or your kid or whatever it is so you have to have ways to still get better at those things without doing them like full time you know exactly and that's what uh when i quit my job and i just depended on myself for a living giving yourself that opportunity for all that free time to kind of like find yourself and experiment i think that's man like super important bro nobody gives themselves that time like you just grow up you go to school then you go to college then you get a job and then you're fucking dead but it's like you never gave yourself like two years to just like experiment like what the fuck do i want to do like did you go to college or hell no did you you in high school it, no. it wasn't a chance right that you were gonna like Dude, it wasn't a thought i went that you were i went go, to right? fucking high school i went to summer school for gym yo <laughs> 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 i 
Bro, I was there at 7.30 a.m. Monday through Friday with the principal just fucking running around, dude. Were you, did you get in trouble in school? Uh, or did, were you just didn't care about school? I was... I, I'm the only one of my brothers who graduate high school. Oh, shit. So, so like, yeah. when I applied, like, I could be the best, but, like, I just didn't give a fuck, dude. And I was like... Well, yeah. what made you graduate high school, then? Going to summer school for gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have dropped out, right? No, it kind of was just, like, my little brother dropped off, uh, dropped out after me, but my older brother just dropped out. He's like, fuck this shit. And I don't know. I was just like, bro, it's not that hard to finish. Like, maybe I'll need this degree, but everything that you're teaching me is ass, so, like... I don't need that shit. Well, I think a lot of us felt, I don't know. I guess everybody has different pressure, man. Like, it kind of opens your eyes to the fact, I don't know. I think, like, I could have never dropped out of high school. Like, there would not have been a way that I could have done that. Like, but I'm just thinking of my parents and, you know, myself. And I don't know, probably, I guess I never really thought about it. Like, I never tried to begin with, and I did good. Exactly. Just naturally, like, I guess. I'm not trying to, like, flex and say I'm better or something. I'm... I just really didn't try that hard. So what I did was I tried really hard, and I did really good. So then I just tried less, and I did just good. So I'm like, oh, this is great. So I just floated. That's exactly what I did, bro. I mean, in my history class, bro, I skipped like 100, like 10 times, bro. I didn't give a fuck. Mm. Didn't even care. <laughs> I mean, bro, I mean... Respectfully, I know other parents are going to scrutinize me for this, but, like, dude, if my son graduates or not, like, I don't give a fuck. I mean, like, yeah, I want him to graduate, but, like, you're teaching him fucking nonsense. So, like, by him not graduating, like, you you box him in as, like, a fucking loser. It's like, no, fuck you, because I'm going to make more money than my teachers, and I'm going to pass them, and they're coming, to, they're coming to work all fucking hungover and not giving a fuck, not caring. Like, shout out to the teachers that, like, care that are hands on because I can name a few I know you can name a few but the bad teachers that don't give a fuck that just can't wait to get paid and go home fuck them man You're teaching the kids shit no passion that was harsh but fuck it I mean it's true yo no it's just happening that's all it's not harsh it's just reality it's a the job the reality is that there's teachers that are doing this job and they don't care but the problem with that is they should be in a different job because they would make way more money Exactly. Yeah. So like you're it's literally a responsibility doing to something. be a leader. You're building yeah. my son's character as you're fucking leading him through the years. Mm-hmm. So like, if you're a fucking bad judgment and character, then you're passing that on to my son. He's listening and validating your opinion and your feedback, and just fucking teach him and be. Just good. try to get closer to that. Sorry. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Sure. No, my, my, it is what it is. It is what it is. What are you gonna do? I feel like I feel like on podcasts though they always like they'll. Like, I'm not going to ask you another time. Like, Well, that's why I asked you before I started, like, if I could chill back here, because now I'm chilling back here. You yo. can chill back there. You want to? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I'll raise the game, yo. Yeah. Right. Let me just put this. Yeah, raise the game, and I'll put Let's this torch. Let's get you. it. You're good. Yep. Um, but, yeah, so, like I said, my girlfriend is a uh, kindergarten teacher, and she is in a really difficult school, and it's, like, a whole situation, and, like, She's like she gets paid okay, but like probably definitely not enough for like the level of difficulty that these kid that the kids are, and it's just everything. Did I talk about this on another podcast? Yes, um, a little bit. Yeah. So the system, because I yeah I remember saying this, the system is so the system was already broken, and then COVID came in and just destroyed an already broken system. So it took a system that was falling apart and hanging out by a thread, and they just completely cut that just cut that thread that's all it did and then everything you know went to shit so yeah i just feel like that's kind of what happened and the thing it's kind the system's probably not even set up for great to make great teachers well, exactly well know? it's not set up to make great students either because then there'd be like classes on entrepreneurship and shit like that like that is like the new thing bro you could i don't know what's the randomest thing like you could eat fruit for a living on youtube you could fucking like what's the most random thing you could fucking surf and get paid you my could guy fucking... Chaz my guy shout out to Cody Chaz he has a channel where he just does ASMR like he just eats McDonald's and records it and bruh. has a thousand subscribers bruh <laughs> yep. Make, making more money than all of our parents 
And, like, he's just eating McDonald's. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't know how much money he's making, but he's getting there for sure. But That's but why. for sure, there's people that do that that do make a lot of money and have sponsors. Imagine you eat food. Your you, your opportunities for sponsors is all food. Exactly. It's killer. That's a great business model. But, yeah, but this is the thing, Devin. Nobody – they don't teach you about jobs in school. What jobs do they tell you about? They're not going to tell you about entrepreneurship because that's a job. So they don't talk to you about jobs. They just they just have you – they just say, here's what you need to know. Memorize it and make sure you know it. It's that's just true. memorization. It's not knowledge. <laughs> See, good thing I'm doing it. I, I get mad if somebody else does it. It's not memorization. It's Or it's memorization. It's not knowledge. It's not knowing and it's not experience. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so you – you know, go through to summer school for gym. Yes, sir. Shout out, Doctor. But Gale, you yeah. read books now. Like you're in. You know, you're thinking. Grow right. Like Bob Proctor. We're talking about all this. What you had to know that education was a piece. But you, when did you like have to? When did you start trying to educate yourself? So one of my friends, Justin Price, he has a um, clothing company called Yacht Club Clothing Company, and we actually started it together in high school. And uh, he was in my second grade class, so he's like an OG and like a real friend of mine. And honestly, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be here right now because I remember in 12th grade, like, I was a fucking goon, bro. Like, I like to pride myself on being a good guy, noble guy right now, honest guy. But, bro, I was a goon, bro. I was throwing rocks at cars, fucking cursing out teachers, like, just all this fucked up shit. Like, I was like a skateboard punk kid, so. But he was, like, the first person to, like, tell me, like, bro, like, you're hanging out with the wrong people. You're spending all this money on weed, sparking up people that don't fucking like you, don't care. Here's a fucking book. Read this shit. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to this guy. And yeah, he just gave me a book and I fucking read it and it changed my life. What was the book? I don't know. I have no idea. But so it wasn't necessarily necessarily the book itself. It was the... It was the people that I was around because we started okay. the clothing company together and then it didn't work out because I wanted to just be a rapper and shit like that. But just being around him and like he's always reading books and shit. He's telling me what he's reading and I'm trying to think what book he gave me. But just no, shout out to Justin Price. That I don't remember best. like most of the books that like I, I just you feel like I feel like you oh, just I know, take I know. lessons. You I, know, I know what it is. Yeah, he gave me a book called Assholeology. And that book is amazing because I was such a nice fucking guy. And anybody who's on this podcast who's like too nice, read the book Assholeology because like it's perfectly acceptable to be an asshole, but like you don't want to be a scumbag. And the asshole always wins. That's interesting. Huh? Assholeology. Yo, shout out to Justin Price for giving me that book. Yeah. Well, honestly, I think that's something that's the opposite to something I brought up in Julian's podcast, which is vanillaism meaning you know how companies are just vanilla nah. like they don't say anything right like they don't have opinions right or people yeah, yeah, it's just, a company. It is. just a company or people online who don't have like my boss is gonna see my twitter and <laughs> you know and that's vanillaism that means you're scared of somebody else taking i even talked to a guy today now this is not the situation with this guy he can really post whatever he wants but he made a meme video about the will smith thing and I know people listening, it, this was a month ago now or whatever, but he made a video about it. It was good. Like, it was a marketing. It was like a meme from marketers, dude. Like, nobody would have understood this unless you were a marketer. And he ended up taking it down because what people were saying, and he probably didn't want his company to, like, people to see people saying things about comments that he knew didn't look good on the videos, so and then his company would go see it. For me, I don't have that. It's great. I canceled myself on like episode, every other episode of this exactly. podcast. Hell so yeah. I'm already good. But I accepted that. I accepted the fact that I will say whatever I want and I'll just tell you how I feel. I'm going to censor what I say so I don't sound like a complete idiot talking on a microphone. But I will just say my opinion. So I feel like that's the, the assholeology and the vanillaism. Meaning, like, my company's going to look at my Twitter, and then I can be an unapologetic asshole as lo long as I'm not hurting anybody's feelings or getting exactly. in anybody's way or abusing it. There's a middle ground that you could have of both those things that I think is, like, you know, you can meet yourself in the middle somewhere. I struggle with that, bro. Vanillaism. Like, I never heard of that, but, like, I struggle with it because... Tra I made that up, dude. I know. You yeah, made that up? That's yeah, point. I made that up. But, like, 
Hopefully. I mean, um, I said it, and Jul- <laughs> Julian, he's pretty well-read. Yeah, yeah. I feel he, like he, he would have like, I've never heard that before. So, but like, on one end of the spectrum, I'm like a rapper who doesn't give a fuck, who expresses this dark shit. Like, yo, everybody goes through shit, no matter who the fuck you are. So, I'm no different than you by writing it down and making a song on it. But then I got, like, people that I work with on, like, a corporate level. And if I post this shit, they might be like, yo, like... This guy we're doing video with is like crazy or some shit. What the fuck is he talking about? But in reality, it's like, bro, you're having these same thoughts. You're going through the same things. I deal with that shit because there's like two of me. There's like a, there's like a fucking like a Peter Parker and then a fucking Spider Man who's kicking ass and killing shit. I put a video in one of my podcasts, my company podcast that we have, and it was Tom. I don't know if you know who Tom Segura is. He's, yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. He. It was a video of. Him, so the vi- purpose of the video was an ad was ad reads in podcasts and how like some people do them creatively. And he said he was talking about Netflix and how you can, uh, if you have a VPN, you can watch unrated Netflix because and then you can see a video of a granddaughter pissing in his in her grandfather's farm, and. I just threw that in the video. I just like didn't care. <laughs> like I just put that in this company video. But it's my company. I, I like I don't. I think this is funny. If you don't like go somewhere else, like don't complain yeah, about that's it. That's true. You know. But I don't know. That's me. I don't complain about people's videos because like they put something in there I don't like. Well, that's why at the Mad Mind Takeover when I was telling you, like I was nervous, bro. And I've done Apollo Theater, but like I don't know if it's because like now I just work with certain people or just because I kind of like ventured off into like the video world and i'm coming back into the music world but like or maybe it's just that i'm just saying like dark deep shit but like i'm like yo these motherfuckers are gonna judge me for what i'm saying right now like whether it's good whether it's bad like for the first time i kind of experienced like that fear of like because like i have like this whole base of people bro i work with rappers i work with singers i work with this guy i work with that guy like a whole bunch of different people so now i'm like yeah why though do you think why? Why well, did that come? Yeah, if it didn't come before at the fucking apology. Because I didn't have like a, uh, like a business to run. Like I didn't like, like I said, like I'm working with like corporate people sometimes and shit like that. So like I'm shaking their hands and like I have to represent like a mature, adult, responsible, kind like figure. Oh, so you weren't nervous for performing? You were saying you now realize the gravity of the situation based on what y- you're saying that people could look at what you're saying. Hell yeah. And judge you and on use that. It and that would me. affect your job. Exactly. Yeah. Because videography is my living. And then I do music on the side. But me like, too. by me being myself on music could take away people doing video business with me just because of my lyrics or just because of I'm fucking on stage headbanging, going crazy, doing this, doing that. Like, people are sensitive and shit like but that. But people it's- will hire you because of that too. Yeah, so that's why on this next album that I'm working on, bro, like, I don't give a fuck, dude, what you think. Like, I'm going to tell my truth. This is my narrative. If I hurt people's feelings or whatever, man, like, this is my life, my reality, my experience. So who the fuck are you to, like, judge me or, like, say that it's not right or it's not fairyland or, like, a fucking fairy tale or anything like that? Like, no, it's not supposed to be. There's, I'm, I'm an uh, entertainer, so, like, I got to give you a show. I don't want to just be like, hey, guys, I'm this guy. I'm successful. I'm perfect. Look at me. Like, no, I'm going to tell you about my life and the bad shit. And then I listen to music all the time when, like, I want to escape from having a bad day. So, like, that's why I make music and shit like that. We didn't make, like, the most happy song right now, but it came of a place of, like, whatever place it came from. It just came. Yeah, I think I don't look into it anymore. I just wrote those lyrics down and ha- had no idea what the your whole thing was about. Like, I didn't know what your idea was. I didn't know about the album. I just wrote down some ideas that just came to me from what i thought what felt cool exactly and then turns out you gave me your idea and i go boop yep fits right into my idea huh my man singing killing it (laughs) just like but it just happened we didn't even have to discuss it you know exactly so people have to understand that that happens it's like don't i i don't even know oh what you know i love when they ask like certain musicians that and they're like i don't know why do you have to why does it have to have a meeting just like certain things that don't uh, yeah, yeah exactly. Me. I mean, I have fucking stupid tattoos. Like, they don't mean shit, bro. Like, some old lady come up to me. What does that mean? I'm like, yo, it's a fucking snake eating a spider. What the fuck do you think it means? <laughs> like, I like Dude, that's sti- a metaphor for life, though. I have people just think everything has more meaning than... It. I think that's human nature. Yeah, I mean, fuck it, man. I just made a song, bro. Like, the fuck? And, bro, 
I'm not sad all the time, bro. People meet me, I'm fucking optimistic. I'm fucking positive and shit. But like when I make music, I'm like, who the fuck wants to hear a fucking positive song? Like no one wants to fucking hear that shit. So like, I'm gonna take you into my world that's not so fucking bright and amazing because everything that glitters isn't gold. And I kind of realized that now because now in my life I could have like a high up here, but then like you never know like if someone's experiencing a high, like what they're actually going through like simultaneously with that. No. Yeah. Oh it's a yeah. Big thing. I mean, I don't know. Dude, like, there's. I I just I just think that art doesn't have to have an explanation a lot of times. You know, That's I feel true. like everybody's just trying to put their spin on what it is. But it, it's like it comes back to how something is. Period. A song is. It just exists. It's a song. Like, it just, it's music, it's audio, and it's just existing. Like, it's okay. It can just be that. Like, it can be a beat, lyrics, there's drums, sure. It's like complex. But just let it be. Like, said, bro, don't overthink it, bro. And I hope you don't hate me for, like, saying this, but, like, Sai, you know Simon, right? He made, like, a post on his Instagram story about, like, him not being able to get back to music because, like, just, like, a lot of things, like, overthinking and overcomplicating, bro. But, like, I told him, like, bro, like, that all... Because I was there, bro. That's why I haven't released music from, like, 2020 until now. Because, like... I don't know if you feel this way, but, like, past projects that we made, we feel like we can't top those. But, like, you gotta get rid of that fucking critic in your head because, like, who the, like, who the fuck is that? And what, what the fuck is that, bro? Like, stop critiquing yourself because just put the shit out just like you said it just is like if i just write a song or I whatever that moment that experience that feeling will never come again and like you just gotta put it out and people are gonna live with it like people are people are experiencing that same shit man all the time bro they could show up to job in a suit in a tie with a smile bro but then they go home bro and they're miserable man happens all the time we have to accept the fact that we don't know like that's the thing like what you think about your song is not what somebody else is supposed to think about it exactly so somebody else is supposed to have a completely different perspective or no perspective oh i don't like it great thank god like you have a perspective that's not mine about this song because it's separating yourself but what what i said to Sai too is and if i make a clip about this i'll throw it up um what he said what and i said dude the only thing we have control over is if we release a song If you want to make this simple, you go, I release, I didn't release. That's it. Exactly. That's it. Because that's the only thing. Or I did a show or I didn't do a show. Like make things binary and then they become very simple, you know, when it comes to that. And it's because we're the people who make the music. So we overcomplicate it because we're the people who made it. So don't treat it like somebody because like what i like to think about too and by the way i'm not perfect like this happens to me this happened to me for two years like you said like did i experience it yeah dude i dropped everyone goes through it i dropped one song and then i I realized oh my god i only dropped one song this is crazy i did it certain performances but it kind of like the time went by and i realized i didn't do it you know and then i had to reprioritize and go do i really want this you know so but yeah i think that we it's hard to get out of our own way you know just it how do you look at your music objectively it's hard but then you got somebody like currency who's made 40 albums who just says i never listen to any of my songs i'm not yeah, a fan of crazy me. bro i listen to all my shit bro i'm my biggest fan man could be a waste of time i don't know could be but yeah <laughs> I, but- I like my shit that's what i'm saying i fuck with my music like i really bump it in a whip like i this is the music i want to hear mm-hmm is the yeah, music exactly, I, made, bro. I do so. the same thing bro and like for every artist and creative out there it doesn't matter if you're a painter or a musician or whatever like get past that spot because like you don't need those those negative thoughts literally serve you no purpose no purpose at all and like you have to get rid of that critic in your head that's saying like this is whack or this is bad bro just make shit and put it out because if you put it out you never know what the fuck could happen like you could hate it but the fucking world could love it and then you're a superstar and then what true and all you and what you, what did you do? You put it out. Exactly. You yeah. didn't care. And just finish the shit, man. Yeah. I just finished the shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the hardest thing for an artist to do. Is finish something. Hard to do. For exactly, people. bro. And um, I don't know if this goes like off track, but like shout out to Casey, like my biggest fan. She's in Rhode Island. I'm headlining a show April 29th at Feet Music Hall. I think it's in Providence, Rhode Island. 
But uh, me and Sully were just talking about this before, and it's like, bro, music's never been, I mean, it has been, but like not now, but it's like, I have 10 fucking monthly listeners on Spotify, right? But like, I have fans who have like tattoos and fans that are like bringing me out to like Rhode Island to like headline my first show ever, and the views and all that shit, it doesn't matter, man. What matters is like, while you're alive, while you're breathing, like connect with the people, make an impact. Like, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm sitting down on this chair right now. Because I want any person who comes on this podcast, I want them to know, accept the responsibility that when you're talking to these people, like, you have the power to, like, impact their world and, like, make a change in their fucking life. And don't underestimate that, man. You made me realize that. Let's go. You, but Wait, you, what I do? You made me realize that in-person shit is everything, actually. Yeah, bro, fuck the internet shit. Dude. And it's, sure, balance, whatever, let's, sure, balance, but if you have a million plays that does not mean you can do a bang in performance hell no Mo- with most people I- mo- everybody I know who has a million plays who I know personally can do a great performance most people can they're at that level but it doesn't guarantee it doesn't mean anything for that they're two separate things one is marketing the other is performance two different crafts so mm-hmm. you're so good at performing dude like thanks bro i've been through it bro I've but you like i can tell you've done so many gigs man like because yeah, i didn't skip a yeah. step bro like mm-hmm. oh sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you bro uh-huh. but like i didn't skip a fucking step bro and a lot of these artists bro like they don't do it like me and there's no fucking blueprint on how to do this but like i'm like maybe i'd be farther if i did more of the content shit but like since the beginning of my music journey bro i just been doing fucking show after show and like being in front of people bro and just connecting with people and that's how you get real fucking fans bro and like um we, 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 we were speaking about this earlier like machine gun kelly right but like the first time i seen that dude was 2011 2012 in warp tour and i didn't even go there for him i went there to see like amir and chelsea grin and a day to remember but like when you give off a killer performance and you watch somebody it's like yo this dude might fucking be a legend one day and like I gotta fucking be a fan right now. Like performers just give that energy that you can't get on the internet or anything like that. Yeah, man. Yeah. I feel like I feel that about any not any, but yeah, similar situations. Like other play other people that I've seen that I wasn't there to see them. Uh-huh. And then they just killed, dude. Hell yeah. And you're like, oh, so this is the thing. The internet is deniable. You can deny people on the internet. You can be like, that's not good. Exactly. But you're kind of judging them on just what you're seeing. But a performance, that's undeniable. Because it doesn't really matter the type of music. If you're, exactly. If you just like the vibe and you really like the energy and you... Sure, if you like, you can like the music too. But yeah, man, performance undeniable in that sense. Like the internet's so much easier to keep going. But a performance, you can't leave. Yeah, exactly. You I mean, walk. you can. You can walk away, but like... I kind of, I've been doing this for so long, bro. Like, you could watch my first performances, bro. My first performance ever, I don't want to sound like arrogant or whatever, but like my first performance ever, bro, I signed an autograph, bro. I think that was the first time, besides like performing at the Apollo, that was like the first time I ever signed an autograph and shit. My first performance was in Atlantic City in Stockton University's Atlantic City campus. And it was a rap, it was a hip hop show. And, um, you know, I was me, and I was there, and I got up, and I did my song, and dude, I had ladies in the crowd just like, uh-huh, okay, like, and Hell I was, yeah. dude, that made me a whole different look yeah, on, it gives on you life, the confidence that you whole need, different right? look on life at that moment, I go, oh my god, these people like resonated with what I said, and I felt like I never, I might have topped that performance once, I feel like first performance ever dude i That's feel crazy. you on it was that. the energy bro yes. but like shout it like listen man any artist bro like listen like someone like told Sully bob like at his first performance like that was fire like when you're an artist like you hold a responsibility and like be that og to the younger generation stop judging their music and be like yo um i'm talking too loud my bad but like stop judging their music and thinking like this is whack or this is whatever like yo give them their credit be like yo that was amazing bro keep it up because if you tell them the opposite, like, they might quit. But if you tell them that was amazing, like, they're going to keep going and be like, yo, like, I look up to this guy, Devin. I look up to Sully and, like, his opinion's validated. And I'm going to keep going with this. Mm. No, great advice. Great advice. Or And also, hey, if you say something like, hey, dude, like, I think, like, you could do a little work on the hook, but I love the song. Exactly. Or I think yeah. you can work on your singing a little bit more or something. Like, that 
people if you have honest criticism for somebody that's like that's you can't buy that dude that's exactly, invaluable yeah. if somebody was to come up to you and be like all right dev listen this song and just analyze all your shit that would be amazing because you would actually, it's, you know. It's a blessing and a curse, though, because. No, you wouldn't have to listen to all of it. but Some um, people yeah. should just listen to it with the open mind, but it sucks like now with the internet and YouTube reactors. Like, everyone's listening is like a fucking, a fucking, a critic. It's like, I don't like this guitar. I don't like this hi-hat. His vocal's too loud. Yeah, this, this album is a zero out of ten. It's like, bro. If you listen with the open mind, like you could actually be like, "Yo, like this shit is amazing." Do you ever like, submit your songs for those things when they read them on live? Hell online? no. Like rap chat. Yo, hell shout no. out to rap chat though. They're doing their thing, but like, I I was watching a rap chat the other day, and I don't know if you've. I, I don't know how popular this. I don't know if it's a big page or whatever. I don't really know. It just came up on my YouTube, and they were reviewing songs. There was one out of like five that was pretty good. I watched it for like twenty minutes. But I'm like, that's another game, dude. I'm, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking not, this I'm random guy, that. and no, no disrespect to that guy. He seemed like he knew what he was doing. But I'm like, I don't need a random guy to. I'm like, I'm good. I'll just, I, I have to go perform this. You know, dude, it's funny that you brought that up because, like, I was thinking, like, people will pay for that review, and then not hear what they want, and then just fucking quit. <laughs> and it's like you just paid for your own demise, like. <laughs> yeah like what the fuck like even if like eminem is like yo like your rap is trash it's like so like who gives a fuck like keep going but these people quit because people tell them their opinion do you know annoyed he was at the chris webby show guy yeah shout out annoyed i walked past annoyed and didn't even know it was him but i knew it was him but i was just like i i just couldn't put it together like I, it took me five minutes to realize it was him and because i love love this stuff man for years he's underrated yeah. so underrated and he has bars and he has the voice and he has it all shout out to connecticut man like i'm you know hey i represent jersey but shout out to connecticut because you guys made annoyed he's dope. Hell yeah um but yeah he was one day i tweeted out of my song and he said not really a fan of the beat but keep going bro i like it Oh, that's fire, man! P- per- perfect. Hit me with a little thing. Oh, I didn't like this as much, but I but keep going. Like, yeah, that's the type of advice. So you tweeted like your song to him, mm-hmm. and oh, he. But was, that's different, though. That's different yeah. than the review shit because then you're paying. Oh no! Yeah, this wasn't. But like, yeah, if you I get genuine never, advice like that, that's actually, amazing. But I get it. It's a marketing thing. Like yeah, I've had yeah, my boy, is. my boy Tom, submit his beats for to Kenny Beats, and him get on the on Kenny Beats. Um, you know stream and he's like yeah i got x amount of plays from that so you're kind of just paying for plays a little no, bit that's but true like, i didn't think of it but like, like that's that. great marketing because there's so many people on the stream that you know yeah, yeah, no, you're gonna get a lot of people I, to listen to your shit yeah yeah you yeah, know i never thought of it like that but imagine so. if you did that if you did like instagram comment marketing and then you did like instagram reels and then you did tiktok and then you did submissions and you looked up all the submissions like you could get this whole thing like full-time job of just marketing your music that way I mean, there's a million ways to skin a cat, but... Oh, yeah, man. Just, yeah. Keep doing your thing, bro. All the artists out there, all the musicians, yo, keep doing your thing, man. Don't stop. Well, so what do you think about this album, man? Like, what was the, you know, you you kind of... I'm so glad that you brought that up, because I feel like we're just going off topic, but... So, it's, it's a podcast, man. Um, The album, the concept is called... Well, the album right now is called Revenge, but, like, the concept is all just, like kind of double entendre how like someone like me who like channels negativity into positivity i'm like success is the best revenge so instead of like being spiteful or resentful or sabotaging people i'm just gonna like take that energy like i hate you i don't like you or you did that you been disloyal to me i'm gonna take that and i'm just gonna create with it and succeed with it but at the same time like when you do that people in your corner in your life like they try to get revenge by like being spiteful by sabotaging by being negative so the whole concept is kind of just like this whole journey that i've been through of kind of succeeding now and like people can see it in like the uh physical world and like the instagram world and shit like that but that changes up everybody around you so i just kind of wanted to just i wrote this first song it's called legacy part two and that kind of started the whole album but it was just like when everything for me is just like changing and evolving and i went through like a lot of pain and like a lot of disloyalty and shit like that and a lot of people when they go through experiences like me like i'm a single dad i only see my son like two three days out of the week a lot of people they get defeated by that for the rest of their lives like they're just like living like 
depressed and they live with neglect and regret and things like that but that that is what kind of like evolved me into like the person and the mindset that i have today and um now when i change and when i evolve and like when i read these books and like people are seeing me changing like they're like oh like devin's like arrogant or like he's full of himself or he's there or he's that and i'm like you could say so but like i don't see it man i'm just over here i don't treat no one less than me i don't put anybody above me i don't care how much money you got i don't care if you're a celebrity but like it's weird how people's perceptions of me are changing when i'm just like changing my perception on the world so like that's like the whole concept yeah it's not personal for you but it's people will take it personally dude people fuck me over dude and i forgive them the next day dude it's like i don't give a fuck what you did bro you know what i'm saying well and that's i mean that's kind of like a little bit of a skill i feel like a little bit it's a skill but like bob Pro- shout out to bob proctor man anyone on this podcast is check out bob proctor he'll do change you, your life can, do you know anything like that he did like i don't know him Part, so like, Bob Proctor, he's basically like he has an amazing story. He was just like a bum and bozo, like eighteen, didn't even graduate high school. And this rich guy just said to him, he's like, "Yo, like, why don't you change your results?" And Bob Proctor at the time was like, "I didn't know I fucking could change your results." And he's like, "If you change your paradigm and your vibration and all this shit, you could change all your results." So he gave him a book called "Think You Grow Rich," and he just started reading that book every single day and until the day he died like he swears that he read the book every single day even if it was just five ten minutes and i got into bob proctor like probably two years ago but then this year he really came back into my life because i realized that i was in a dark space and i needed like change and i needed that knowledge and awareness but uh bob proctor after he got successful he made like i don't know like a hundred thousand his first year after like his whole life making like five thousand a year just by like changing his paradigm and his vibration and his habits and all those things but after succeeding he probably like 30 years old he wanted to go meet this guy i think his name is earl nightingale he is like an amazing like self-help thing called the the greatest secret i think it's like just some shit it's like think and grow rich in a nutshell but like audio everyone here should check it out so then bob proctor just wanted to study for the rest of his life why that knowledge and that book worked so from like 30 to 80, he just studied like the law of vibration and shit like that. The law of vibration is just basically like Albert Einstein said that if you match the frequency of something that you want to be on, if you match that frequency and that vibration, the only result is getting like those results. Like everything is about vibration and frequency. So Bob Proctor just talks a lot about like paradigms and shit like that. A paradigm is like a pattern or a habit and... You have to change your paradigms and you're like, you have to be aware. Like we all go through the day all the time without even being like aware or present. And that's something that he helped me out with because even the thoughts going back to like talking about the negative and positive thoughts, the negative thoughts don't serve you any purpose. Like we're just programmed to like let them slide and let them be there, but you can kind of start capturing them. Like start studying your thoughts all the time and listening. Like I don't have to have that thought. Like let me get rid of that and just replace it with a positive one. The only way to change a paradigm is to program it with the opposite. So that's something that I've been aware of lately. Shout out to Bob Proctor. He dedicated his whole life to the law of vibration, law of attraction, all that shit. So do you think when you combine it with work and then that's that's when it works, right? Or Yeah, I mean... Because you can't just do... You can't just manifest and that's it. Like you have to do the work too. Yeah, so obviously, just going back to that, it's like, it's all about, like, your frequency. Like, how are you operating? Yeah, but what, so, see, like, the problem, if, the only problem I have is that, what does that mean? What does that mean? Like, it you means, know like, that doesn't mean anything to most people, right? Yeah, so it's hard to, like, tap into and, like, understand. Because I know like, what you're saying, but could I, do I even know it's real? No. Do, yeah, I, well, do exactly, I believe it? Yeah, but I don't fucking know, and I can't exactly, really explain they, it to They somebody. have to be teaching this shit in school, yeah, because it's real. But it's, I'm saying. It's physics. It, but, like, well, all right. it's like. It's like turning the radio station, right? Like, you can't hear Hot 97.1 until you turn the radio to Hot 97.1. So you can't be successful, you can't be a millionaire until you turn that switch inside of you and you change all the decisions that you make and all your thoughts to that. And then you only operate at that frequency and then you get whatever the fuck you want and that's it. It's literally that simple. Well, what about people who went from nothing and who are rich and they're like, no, that just isn't true. But they did it without being aware of it. And like, 
I was on Rob DX podcast, but like when I wrote down my goals and I was like, by December 2022, I'm gonna have $200,000. It's gonna come to me in various forms. And you read that shit to yourself every day, like shit just changes. And I, if anyone on this podcast was lis- listening, like y'all fuck this guy, he's talking shit, like just try it. Just write down your goals because writing down your goals and telling it to yourself in the morning and the night, you're just gonna change your frequency and your vibration and then you're gonna fucking succeed. It's no time for bullshit and none of that negativity. Get that out of your fucking mind. I know there's something to it because it's I manifested my girlfriend actually. It so was cool. I, bro. My yeah. son's mom. Shout out my son's mom. Yeah, man. Just wrote down. I wrote down. So, okay. So I never really had a girlfriend or like a long-term girlfriend or one that I really cared about deeply. And that's what I wanted. Or that's what I thought I wanted. Whatever. Either way. So what I did was I was reading Think and Grow Rich and I every day I was writing my letter to money you know I wanted this much money and I was gonna manifest it or you know just do both you know I was gonna manifest it and then go and do the work but at least with a relationship I was like yo I gotta make this happen you know because this is not happening for me you know because I felt like everybody that I met I was like I just everybody was there was something missing from everybody and I didn't meet the person that I really clicked with, I felt like. So that's what I wanted. So I was like, yeah, I want somebody I click with. They have to, like, they'll probably look like this. They'll probably be little. Like, I wrote down eight things, maybe, what I thought that they would be. And, yeah, months later, man, just was working at Wawa. My boss was buying us breakfast. And there was just a random girl there. Didn't know who she was. Introduced myself. That was it year later we were dating two years later after that we're dating for two years so it's just crazy man but well that's why it's like the crazy thing of like people could say that it doesn't work even though it's working for them and they just don't believe in this shit and it's fine but like the second that you change your frequency that you operate on like if you're operating like a loser and just smoking weed all the time like you're gonna attract like a certain type of crowd energy and people but if you change that and you wake up and you're like yo i'm gonna start a business i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that like just your shift in energy is it's just common sense like it's just gonna attract new people and the people that are just smoking weed doing nothing all day they're gonna lose interest in you because they want to be around people that are all like sharing that energy but it's physics yo. like everything is energy and that's anything there is to it shout out to albert einstein for saying that quote but shout out to al yo al einstein Damn. not alchemist bro al einstein Hell no. al einstein yeah d- no man it's crazy it's crazy to think about that but it's like really though like really though like do you really think that like someone successful or rich is like any different than you like no they're literally the same human being with the same blood and the same organs and the same brain they just operate differently. Well, I th- what I think it is, I think people underestimate this too much, which is mostly hard work gets you to the point where, so hard work creates options, options creates opportunities, and those opportunities, you can make, you can decide what you want to do with them. So people don't really, like freedom's great, but I think people really want options because like, because Sure, everybody wants a million dollars or whatever that number is, but they also aren't going to sit around and do nothing all day, even if they think they are. If you think you're going to get a bunch of money and then sit around all day, you're not going to do that forever. Exactly. Sure, if you're at the end of your life and you're content, sure, maybe. But if you're 20 years old, probably not. Like, you're going to want to do something else. So I think that there's the kind of this illusion. I mean, there's a massive illusion of, like, rich people. That's a massive illusion that people have. Um, but really what it is, is you have, when you get, make money, have, you know, have own assets, all these things, and you're quote unquote successful, those people, all they did differently for the most part was they probably worked smarter. They probably had a lot of high value skills. They probably had more leverage and then they made different decisions. So like, it's pretty simple, really. It's just the, like the differences are simple. The difference is they made different decisions than you. You took this job, they went, maybe were homeless. Maybe they worked five jobs. You know, maybe they, they just made different decisions. That's all. Exactly. And it comes down to like, are you aware? Because like we said earlier, like every person who's listening and on this podcast in this room can do way better than what they're doing. That's not, that's not opinion. That's a fact. So it's like the only way 
to tell about like your paradigm and like everything is like your results are you getting the results that you want no so you got to fucking change a lot of shit about yourself until you get the results that you want but you got to wake up first i think that's the thing yeah man i think a lot of people are sleeping kind of going if you're listening to this podcast that's not you i think because just i feel like you probably have a level of self-awareness that you've developed at this point but i think a lot of people are because and i'll end that point with saying if you're listening to a long-form conversation you have to listen for an extended period of time and really get into the conversation to really understand like what we're talking about so if you're doing that you probably have a higher mental capacity and a pretty good listening skill so you're probably already in in the realm of having a higher self-awareness exactly but i think that people mostly are asleep and there's a great book that i've mentioned here before called awareness by anthony DeMello, and he opens it with most people are asleep most people go through life asleep and that's what you're talking about and alluding to the beginning of the conversation of you know you'd work your job you get your 401k your pension you cash out you're 65 you cruise till the end it's not appealing to me but that's appealing to certain people and that's fine but i think there's people that it's not appealing to but then they're like but i can't change it i'm scared exactly and that's how they're operating though like they don't think of anything more or less they just want to go to but then there's people who like but that's fine too like and there's people who like their jobs that's the thing yeah yeah that's cool right cool that's perfect that's what we're talking about we need that you got to get to a point where you actually enjoy what you're doing you know what i'm saying like that's the og exactly that should be the goal while i'm living and while i'm breathing like bro i want to make a fucking change on this earth bro like i don't want to just fucking live 99 then i die and it's like i didn't impact no one's heart or no one's soul i didn't inspire anybody like when i die bro like i want the whole entire fucking earth like people in all fucking countries to be like yo like this motherfucker inspired me he gave me knowledge he wanted me to aspire to be something great like that's what I want to do, man. That's how I operate. But you live it, though. Like, you're come up. You could have done nothing. You could have done none of this. Hell yeah, but what, like, what else am I going to do? Yeah, I'm, I didn't go to college. I fucking went to summer school for fucking gym. Like, what else was I to do except to be like, yo, like, let's just try an experiment and see if this shit fucking works. You did it, though. And like, if I fail, I'll fucking at 30, I'll get a job and I'll be a janitor and a garbage man. My dad will be happy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can always fall back on that one, Dev. Well, it's a Gary Vee shit, too. Gary Vee's always like, you could always get a job at 40. And he's like, he's fucking right, yo. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm I'm down to go. I'll go, dude. People are scared of going broke, but they're already broke. Exactly, yeah. They've been check to check just because you get money every week, but have no money by the end of the week. That's still mean that you're fucking broke. Hey, own it, run a business and have people work for you. You're going to know. You're going to understand broke. Hell yeah. You're, we're going to really understand broke when you pay other people's bills. Hell yeah. You want to you wanna pay other people's bills? I'll show you broke. Hell yeah. You know? These people living, they got only their bills. Okay. Exactly. Let's fucking. Okay, what about four? You want four bills? Like, exactly, yo, shit, yo. shit's really real, you know? And this is the thing. There's just different problems with different things. What type of problems do you want to have, you know? That's really what it is, right? comes down with, hey, those people made different decisions because they had, and they, from those decisions, had different opportunities. And by default, they have different problems. Exactly, yeah. And social media made it everyone equal playing ground, bro. Like, doesn't matter what you do, where you are. You could fucking make a post. You could send a DM. Shit could change your life, man. Fucking... And Jeff Bezos didn't listen. You could say he got lucky, bro. You can say Steve. You're gonna say Steve Jobs got lucky. It's like you're gonna say these guys got lucky. Most people won't had no. You're you're sure luck. Luck could have been the idea of Amazon of a digital bookstore. Sure, you could chalk that up to luck. I won't. Yeah, not nah, because luck skill. is the execution of that idea. He got lucky that he had that thought in his mind. That's that's it. my thing too, dude. Ideas are like not like fucking ideas are shit man fucking start an nft bro you know like not like that like ideas are shit i'm saying your ideas are real but they're worthless unless you do something with them like i have a bunch of great ideas but they're but they're just ideas like they're not worth anything i think people think like their ideas are worth something turns out everybody's got them Uh, exactly bro gotta do shit gotta get on it so what's the current man what's the state of the album oh bro right now I got like 20, 30 songs done. Shout out to John Eldridge who's been mixing and mastering all my shit now. Um, 
I'm really just waiting on features, bro. Hopefully, I get Turk Royale on it. Shout out Turk Royale if you're listening, motherfucker. You might have to drop that name on a podcast. Motherfucker, just to get you him to better sh- get on this shit, yo. He'll get on it. Are you kidding me? Shout out to Samad Savage. I'm gonna have him on the album. I'm gonna have my boy Decap Black on the album. Shout out Decap Black. Decap, I actually, got you coming up here. We got a song together too. Hell um, yeah. I'm trying to get my boy Terra Van Poo on the album. Um, my boy Vinny Idol, who produced the Bing Bong record, I'm trying to get him to produce one of the beats on because I'll be shooting all of his videos and shit like that. So, album coming soon. I was supposed to have it done April 29th, but then I realized April 29th is way too soon. But I'm gonna have new music to perform at that show because at the Mad Mind show, I was like, yo, all these songs are old, yo, and I can't keep coming back and playing the same fucking songs. Like, I gotta hit him with new shit. So April 29th, all new music. I think you're, but your energy though, I people like the other. It's like with any of them, man. You know, it's like with body bags with Ron Solomon well, or something. You know, it's just the fact that like you have a songs. You like those songs are good. That's why they work. I want to hear them because I love them because I'm the hype man. I was the hype man, so like I got all into it. But that's the thing too about your music for like artists and shit. Like there's no social experiment on your music on the internet. Like go play it in front of people. Because, like, my song could get zero plays on the internet, but then you play it in front of people and everyone is fucking going nuts. And then it's like, all right, that's a good song. Yeah, there's no, it's completely different. Hell yeah, completely different. That's how. That's why I ask all artists on this podcast, do you plan out the live performance aspect of the song when you're making it? If I get writer's block, it's because I write every single song with the intent to perform it live. Yeah, you're the only one that has said that. I mean, bro, that's just how I think. Like, the second I hear the beat, I'm like, can I perform this live? And sometimes it sucks because I want to write, like, I don't know, just sad shit or, like, whatever. Did you always do that, though? Performing was just, like, a thing in my career, bro. Like, since, since the beginning, bro. Like, I just, like, made my first song and I just started fucking performing. And I would just start, like... I had, like, these little tour flyers that I made when I was, like, 18, 19, and I would go to, like, fucking Philadelphia, New Jersey, Connecticut, New York, and I just realized the importance of performing, and I realized that when I went to a live show, like, for example, when I seen Machine Gun Kelly the first time, or when I was 13 and I was going to, like, local shows, I felt what the music was, like, doing to me, and that's always what I wanted to do to the audience, because that's a feeling you can't get on the internet. Anyone here could go to, like, any random artist. Like, I could take someone to, like, a Bring Me the Horizon show, and they're going to be like, yo, I don't want to listen to them. But then you go to their concert, and you're going to leave, like, the biggest fan because, like, that energy is just, like, unmatched. So that's why I realized the importance of performing live. How, I don't, do you practice the performances? I don't know. The only time I, pra- the only time I practiced was when I did the Apollo and I was like, I need to win, so like I'm gonna like mic flip and shit. And I was like, if I do the mic flip, I'ma win, even though I still lost. But I, the only time I practiced was when I was practicing the mic flip, and I got it to a point where I would flip the mic and just do it with my eyes closed, literally a hundred times, just so I knew that when I went out there, like I wouldn't drop it. I've seen you flip the mic before. Yeah, I like hell that. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! C- well, the real practicing just happens on stage, right? Like you can't really, other than a mic flip, what can you really practice? Right? It's hard, man. What for you me, I practice every day for a month and then perform live, and I wasn't any better. So I think the practice comes from watching your live performances ah, over and over again. That's why I need to watch my shit. Yeah, exactly. So, like, why are you standing there like that when, like, the hook is going? Like, you always got to, like... I practice it so much, so, like, I almost got it down to a science. Do you so, like, want to grade mine? Do you want to grade my live performance? No, no, no. Can you give me feedback? Send it to a... You're better than um, me. Send it to a music learn. reviewer guy. And <laughs> a drill. <laughs> 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 Paying forty five dollars. This. <laughs> All right, but it's gonna be uh, one sixty eight to uh, do uh, the. Yeah, uh, yeah. T- send me send me one hundred fifty bucks and I'll review it. All right. Uh, yeah. So we uh, it's a four minute review. It's gonna be one seventy. Jeez. So these guys trying to make a trying to make some bills off of anything, man. I, I mean, respect it, bro. That's respect. what I'm saying. Trying to make bills off of anything. Just I love the hustle. People people will pay. You know what I realized too? Like people will pay money for. And, like they won't invest in something for four grand, but dude, they will throw four grand at the dumbest shit. Like they don't. Some people they don't want to make money with their money, dude. They just want their money to be like gone or in stuff. Or that's fine. I don't know. I'm not criticizing. I just think exactly, it's exactly interesting, bro. I don't know if I mentioned this on the last podcast, bro, but like 
I would drive to Reading, Pennsylvania, which is like five hours from my house, and I I would pay like nine hundred dollars just to fucking pet just to play, and like people, they fucking spend a thousand dollars on like a T-shirt, and like you want to talk like you deserve success more than me. It's like, bro, you gotta be in the trenches like that. Like you gotta like sacrifice and like go through those things like in order to succeed. If you're not gonna invest in your own career, like, bro. Like, this is your life. What do you mean you're not trying to invest? But you're investing, like, uh, like no disrespect to, like, Louis Vuitton or Gucci, but, like, these motherfuckers will buy that. It's not getting you nowhere in life, but you look cool on Instagram, but then you're complaining that you're a rapper that's going nowhere. Like, bro, take that money and invest in a music video, better recording, a logo, anything. There's no return on investment mindset, though, Demi. The yeah, mindset exactly. is not return on investment. The mindset is people need to think that I'm cool. That's that what I'm, exactly. a Gucci belt is. And that's like me saying you buying a brand new Corvette is is you have to think people are cool. I'm a car guy, so I could totally say that no, like not always. <laughs> Sometimes you just like the car, dude. You know, like what exactly. if you just like the Gucci belt better than the other belts and you just like that one? Then I'll come along and be like, nah, dude, you're just trying to look cool. But the difference is when you prioritize that bullshit for like your career, and then you yeah, just, I then, wouldn't buy a Corvette when I'm like need to pay my employees. Yeah, like, exactly, you know what I'm saying? exactly. Yeah, but yeah, shout out to the artists, man. I mean, shout out to the artists who get it and invest in themselves. But like, shout out to the artists that need to wake the fuck up. And I, I know I sound like an arrogant asshole, but like, bro, just fucking do the right thing. Like, we have choices. If you have a hundred bucks, you could fucking buy a stock. You could buy NFT. You could buy diapers. You could buy milk. You could pay rent, or you could fucking just. Get drunk and buy some weed, and nothing, nothing comes from that. So it's up to you. What book are you on? Any like book now that you're like fascinated? I just with? read a book called uh, "The Richest Man in Babylon." Did yeah. you read that uh, book? I think it's Turk was reading that. I think yeah, I so. told Turk to read it. Yeah, yeah. freaking dude, you just read them, and then Turk puts them up, and he's like, "I'm found this book." <laughs> <laughs> Shout out! I to love Turk. you, Turk. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was looking for like a really good book to read, and my boy Gilbert was like, "Yo, this is one of the best books that I ever read," and he wasn't lying. Man. People have told me about it for years. So you think I should should I get it? It's like The Alchemist. I don't know if you've ever read The Alchemist, but it's like a fictitious not. story with like real money principles. And Babylon obviously isn't a real place, but if you could picture Babylon, just picture the United States of America where like everyone has the same opportunity to be wealthy, but everyone is fucking broke. And this guy just goes through the book and he's like, yo, I'm going to teach all these people in Babylon like how to be rich. So like first thing you do, doesn't matter how much money you make, you save fucking 10% of your income. Because people were coming to him that made a million a year, and people were coming to him that made 50000 a year, and all of them were broke. So he's like, it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much you save. Mm -hmm. That book changed the way I look at like making money and spending money and investing money. So yeah, everyone read that book. Are you on a more financial type of discovery now because of that? or Well, you were talking off camera that how you kind of were on this manifesting, and then money started coming into your life more yeah i mean i just never cared about money i never valued money like i know that sounds like whack but like even when i started making music like people make music just to make money but that was like never my motive i was like whatever money i get i'm just gonna like buy a music video or buy an ad or like buy a performance slot on a show so it that that book like i should have read that early on in my life but i never like valued money until now until i'm like a father and i'm like yo like this money is like freedom and it's power and like i need it but i was never someone at like an early age like even when i worked bro like i didn't have shit to show for the money that i made i would just have like experiences that it brought me probably change a little bit when you had a kid too right oh yeah money's a little bit you know you gotta like now you have another per human being oh yeah so I always just I'm speaking at it, about it from the outside. You know? Shout out my son, yeah, little Joe. Little Joe, what up? Little Joe, if you listening, I love you, bro. A homie, the future generation. Pop, pops out here making it happen on the pod, making the I'm music. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm doing it. I mean, it's it's working so far, dude. You got you. So, how did this show come together? Yeah. So let me tell you a story about the show, yo. So like, I, shout out to Casey. I know I said this before, but like. She has an AK-40 Devin tattoo, and, like, when she sent me that tattoo, like, it just changed my whole fucking life, man. If I played a show in fucking, like, Australia, she would fly out and fucking go. And 
that's another thing that like live experiences does. Like if I never performed in front of her live, like she probably would never have a connection with me. Like because there's like a real emotional connection when you perform live. But she's throwing a show and she was I don't want to like cuz I don't know exactly what she does, but like she's like a journalist for like her college and she wrote like a newspaper article about me. I think it was like the beginning of this year or last year. But then her college like commissioned her to like do a show and she put together like all of her favorite local bands and local acts. T Cat Black is one of them. Oceans of Illusions, another band from New Jersey is one of them. And I was just her favorite and she was like, Yo, do you want a headline? Like here's this bag. I never got a rap bag ever in my life. I'm not gonna say how much because there's other people on the lineup that maybe I don't know if you even got anything, but like I got a fucking bag to be a headline act after two years that I even like drop music so like music is timeless man like just drop something release the shit but yeah April 29th I'm performing at Feet Music Hall in Providence Rhode Island my first ever headline show and it's gonna be lit and yeah let's kill it dude that's amazing that's crazy man so oh, yeah. it was from it was because of a fan to somebody that sh- saw you live hell yeah wow crazy somebody has you tattooed on them hell yeah bro and you know I can't quit music after that no. Sometimes I don't want to do it, but I'm like, what? If, like, what if I just quit? Then what? Then yeah. someone asked about the tattoo and be like, yeah, yeah, you know, just some guy to quit rapping. Like he didn't go nowhere. But let's not talk about. But that. I really liked him back then. I thought he was really good. You know, <laughs> exactly, bro. And it just goes back to the thing. Like when you see somebody live, like it doesn't matter if they're a local act. Like Turk is the same person, bro. When I seen Turk, when I was like 18, I was at Turk's first show. He wasn't at my first show, but I was at his first show. But, like, just his energy and, like, his lyrics, I was like, yo, this dude is going to be a fucking star, man. And then combined with he's a dope guy. The best. Dude. Like, if you didn't even know he rapped, you'd be like, fucking love this guy. The best, bro. But it, that's it, but that's the trifecta, man. Or however many that you want to include, however many factors you want to throw in there. But if you're a great artist and you have energy and you have good lyrics and you have good beats and you're a really cool person it's like man you have like everything exactly like now it's time now you gotta just plug into the matrix exactly bro exactly but it's hard out here for artists man it's a war against yourself though at the end of the day right truth truth well how do you look at that man when it's like all right do you know that you have to put out a certain amount like do you have a certain do you look do you want to put out more music than you're putting out or hell yeah because to succeed like like you need to be consistent all the time you got to be on tiktoks and like i've told people that i work with this and it's like bro i don't know if i can make it as like uh i mean obviously i can but i'm old school bro like the new school artist the way to make it is like posting on tiktok two three times a day do wedding doing your own content doing your own video for your own music videos and shit like that but me like it's like bro i don't know like I'm a fucking 26-year-old dad, dude. I don't want to sit around making TikToks all day. I'd rather just take that time, send emails, book shows, go live, and play in front of people, and then I got fans, bro. Like, there's no right or wrong way to go about it, right? I'm I'm trying to... I'm trying to shoot... Okay. I've always had my music videos shot for me. I've always done my own remixes. Any remix I did of a song, I shot it here. You know, the quality's improved. I'm getting better at cameras and stuff. But I want, I honestly, I want to shoot my yes, own, yes. Not, I want to shoot my own <laughs> video so I can understand it more. Do you think yeah, that's I'll a good idea? You, bro. Hell yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I pick your brain about that a little bit? Of course, bro. So what, what was the first music video that you shot? Uh, the first music video that I shot, it was either Serious Black We Not Friends, and I think it's going to be that one, or it's the Incredible Merv Jealous. How long ago was that? This was shit, man. It's the first time I'm ever saying this, yo. So like, low key, like I'm gonna just break the secret right now. But like, I kind of had like, I don't want to say it's imposter syndrome. But I've told people that I've been doing this longer than I've been doing it when I haven't been doing it that fucking long, yo. And sometimes it pisses people off who've been in like the world longer than me, and they're like, yo, he just started in 2020, but like. Fucking man, the first music video that I ever made was in fucking 2020, bro. Two fucking years ago, yo. Because when you did our video, and this was I'm referring, <laughs> I'm, I'm referring to Five Fingers, yeah, yeah, by Psy and Sully Bop on the drop, and that vi- that song is dope. That I video love that is song, dope, bro. But you, yo, I kn- I knew the, 
I was okay. So this is what happened. Dev was like, "Yo, we got to do a group FaceTime." And I'm like, "Ah, what's going on? You know, I don't want to do group FaceTimes. So I don't know what's going on." And I loved it, man. You were trying to plan it out, like you were just working with us, like together on it, and like just hearing us out. We all, maybe this sounds stupid. That like, yeah, dude. Obviously, you got to collaborate. But I don't know. I didn't. You didn't have to do that. You could have just showed up that day. Attention to detail, bro, is everything. Yeah, and then you had your homie with the drone there. It's just that was me with the drone. I had my homie. Or no, yeah, he had the camera. Alex just assisting me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man, I I really appreciated the professionalism. But what you did too with the album cover that you incorporated into the shot that was. I felt like you spent some time on that, too. Oh, that was that was all Sai's idea, though. That was Sai's That was idea. his idea, but you yeah, did the yeah. execution, though. Yeah, yeah. No, that took a while. Yeah, no, hard, I, could, bro. I could tell, man. That was t- tough. So I, I, I knew you were... Because I just didn't see any other videos. Like, I knew you were just starting to make videos because I had been following you. I didn't know you were a rapper. That's funny, yo. Yeah, I had no idea, dude. I thought you were a video guy. Because I knew you for videos. That's funny, yo. From yeah. side, that's how I really started getting connected with you because I didn't even know you before we shot that video with you. Kind of so, crazy. So real quick, the real story is like, shout out to this guy named G Givadi, amazing person, amazing soul, changed my life. I used to work at this restaurant called OIP, and um, the truth of the story is, bro, the fact of the matter is, like, I worked at that pizzeria for like seven, eight years, and I was kind of like the boy who cried wolf. Like, yo, I'm going to be great. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But I was able to convince this guy, Giovanni. Oh, sorry. The smoke's getting in your eyes. I was able to convince this guy, Giovanni, to, like, believe in me. I don't know if you can convince somebody, but, like, he believed in me, bro. So we always drink at the end of the night. We're drinking, drinking, drinking. He's like, yo, let me give you some money, bro. I got fucking money. I don't know what the fuck to do with it. So I'd be like, bro, I'm not fucking taking your money. But one night, we are just drinking, bro. We all drunk as shit. He's like, yo... Go to the bank, yo. Take the money, whatever you want to do with it. You could invest. You could fucking buy equipment. You could do whatever. And bro, I needed the money at the time. Like, I had a kid and shit like that. I was broke. So, he just gave me 5000 bucks. He's like, yo, whatever you want to do with it, just figure it out. You could buy real estate. You could buy stocks. You could buy Bitcoin. You could whatever. So, I thought about it for a minute. And I was like, yo, let me invest in myself and just buy. And this is in the end of 2019, right before I got fired for COVID. Um... He gave me this, and I just thought about it. I called up Veg. I'm like, yo, what camera are you shooting with? He said, yo, GH5. I'm like, yo, GH5 is a great camera. I'm going to get it. Bought that. Bought a lens. Bought a computer, a computer screen. All the money's gone. But the beginning of the pandemic hit, 2020, I lost my job. All I had was this fucking camera I didn't even know how to use. So then that goes into me sending messages, trying to be a salesman for a business that I didn't even have. So I'm messaging everyone, just trying to get money. And that's when Will C brought me out. And he's a legendary director who works with World Star Hip Hop, directed videos for The Locks, Davies, Vado, Papoosh, Jim Jones, etc. He literally started working with me all the time just because I had a drone. But like, I didn't know shit what the fuck I was doing, bro. The first job I did was for Fresher. And um, I don't know if you know who Fresher is. He's a song with Eminem fresher and i forget the feature's name but i was like flying my drone bro i didn't know nothing about shutter speed nothing about iso and he just looking at me like yo do you know what the fuck you're doing but like he just kept me on board and he taught me how to be a director how to be a bts guy and i know this is going a little off topic but like i would just go there and like learn on the spot because i didn't have any college i didn't have i was watching youtube videos to learn i was learning from veg too but we would just do like these BTS jobs like for the locks or for like Jim Jones and I would just go home and edit the shit in like fucking six hours, bro. I would just go home, edit the shit, send it right to him. And that's just how I got my foot in the industry. And that happened right as I learned how to do video. And that's like how I got business because people were like, yo, if you're working with Jadakiss, you must know what you're doing. So I'm going to pay you for a music video. When really, I was just this fucking BTS guy learning as I'm fucking going. That's crazy. <laughs> it's that fake it till you make it, baby. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. You know God what it is? had a camera. What I heard, which I like more, fake it till you become it. Bro, exactly. And you got to have heart, man. But this is the thing. You, oh, you sold, then delivered. Not knowing 
all the details about how you were going to go deliver. But then you went and delivered and did exactly. it. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. Because you made a commitment with yourself. Exactly. And you learn as you go, bro. I'd be filming shit and like shit's like granny. My ISO's too high. I fucked up bad, bro. I remember I fucked up bad this one time. But we'll see, bro. We're filming Remy Ma and Papoose. Bro, like Remy Ma's like a queen, bro. Like you don't fuck this shit up, bro. Papoose is a legend too. Like, But, uh. I was filming BTS and it was like one of the greatest like video experiences I ever had and I never went to college so that was kind of like my college experience but like just the way like we set it up is like a 1990s style video and everyone's dressed up like the mafia and shit like that motherfuckers got machine guns all the girls are dressed like fire and I was just filming BTS and like he just told me at one point he's like yo like make sure you're filming so I just used up all of my battery or I used up all of my SD. I think I used up all of my SD card. I had a 128 at the time. So we're not even halfway done through the job. So my boy who had a Sony, I was like, bro, could I please use your camera or whatever? Oh, and I put my SD card in his camera. And you can't put an SD card like into like different camera brands. So you can't put a Panasonic shit in a Sony without formatting it. So then I filmed for the rest of the fucking day and nothing recorded. But, like, that's how you learn, bro. Yeah. It's those experiences and shit like that. So, the pizza place you were working at. Yeah. The owner? Yeah, yeah. Gives you five grand. No, no, no. The worker. Somebody. He's, a, he's an immigrant. His name is Giovanni. He's one of the people with the biggest hearts in the world, man. He didn't need that. Hell no. So, he gives you... He says, hey, do what you want with it. Then you have an idea to sh be a videographer yeah yeah just an idea all right i'll buy a camera see where it goes i just felt like i could do it i and was like i think i could do it who are now some people in the last two years that you've worked with who are notable people companies you know i feel shout like shout out to j mac we just did the post malone proposal video it's my first video to ever hit a hundred thousand views it's gonna hit a million views post malone we, we need you to fucking co-sign that shit but uh work with him i've worked with um Jada Kiss, Sheik Lou, Styles P, Jim Jones, Vado, Papoose, um, Remy Ma. Uh, I've worked with Coach recently for the New York Fashion Week. Uh, yeah, I think that's Is it. Is it crazy I mean, to think about when you look at where you are, were in that pizza place about to receive that $5,000 and then what you've done now in the last two years? Nah, I never even reflected on it till now, honestly, bro. What, what does it feel like dude it's it, it, it's crazy man i mean that changed my whole life forever bro because then uh, i'm i don't know if i should say this on a podcast i don't fucking know i'm just gonna say it but like bro i got fired for having fucking covid bro you know what i'm saying like he didn't want to close down he didn't want no one to know and bro i worked at the same place for eight years bro and that fucking this is the guy that like and, bro, I love this guy, right? I forgive him. Like, we talked about this before, bro. I don't care what the fuck you did to me. I forgive everybody. I still go into his pizza place to this day. Um, he fired me for having COVID, bro. And that shit hurt me, bro, because he was, like, a, a friend and, like, a mentor to me almost. And, like, he would even... He would go out of his way all the time to take care of his employees. Like, he's paid for my son's daycare for a whole entire month, yo. And that shit is not fucking cheap. But, like, when he did that, bro, it just, like, stabbed me in the back and just hurt my heart so much that I was like, bro, I'm never getting a boss ever again because I don't want to leave myself open, like, for that vulnerability. And that's a lie because I did have jobs, like, that year, but only out of survival. But by 2021, I was like, I'm not having a fucking job no more. Did you feel any extra pressure? Like, dude, you literally have a kid and you're out here and you lose your job because he fired you because he had COVID. And I had a newborn baby. You had a newborn baby, but now you're going to become a videographer. Yeah, my baby mama is fucking furious. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? Get a job. I mean, bro, that's respectfully, that's like part of the reason that like we broke up because I was always like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to achieve this. And like, I remember like she was like in her room and I was like, yo, I'm about to go film Dave East. I got to go. And she's like, yo, shut the fuck up. She bought me tickets to see Dave East because she knew he was one of my favorite rappers. And then like they kind of saw it, but they were just like, yo, like what the fuck? Like this kid is actually like doing shit. So the people that were in your life didn't realize that you, or think that you were going to... Well, I think anybody who adapts this lifestyle, it's hard for, like, any partner to understand. Because, like, I don't have, like, a Monday through Friday schedule. 
it could be any time, any day. Anybody could call me up. Yo, I got this opportunity for you. And we make these opportunities ourselves. Like, I've never sat back and got an opportunity handed to me. I've sent millions of emails, millions of DMs and shit like that. But um, I forgot what the fuck I was saying. But we we work for these fucking opportunities, man. You go out and create the opportunity, yeah. No, but I just think it's so crazy that you, by any stretch of the, by any, anybody, most, n- most people's standards would just be like, all right, man, I know I got to go get a, another regular job now because I got a kid and I, you know, I got fired because I had COVID and now like, man, I was working at a pizza shop. People don't make changes like that, dude. That's what I'm saying. At least I don't, it doesn't seem like they do. Well, yeah, let me just give Machine Gun Kelly's flowers, bro, because... That dude, like, single-handedly, like, changed my life, man. I got a lace-up tattoo, like, I have an amazing dad, but I never had, like, I never had, like, one who, I don't want to, like, talk shit or be negative, but, like, I I have an amazing dad, but, like, he never was, like, hands-on with, like, any of this music or, like, anything like that. Um, So, like, he was kind of that person for me, like, when I... When I discovered him and then I went to EST Fest and he was just walking around his festival, smoking with everyone, drinking with everyone. I kind of looked at somebody for the first time. Like, you could be my friend and, like, achieve this, like, like having a whole festival, like, just about you. That was the first time that I looked at somebody and I was like, yo, like, I could fucking do this. You came from Cleveland, bro. You got a kid. You were working at Chipotle, too. So, that's what fucking inspired me to, like make a change in this world man well what inspires you to keep it going now now i look at my son and i look at people that's like gonna go to school with him and like they need like a positive role model in their life like there's so much bullshit everywhere and even in music there's a lot of bullshit but like i'm not blaming entertainers for that entertainers are doing their thing and they're making their money but everybody needs somebody like that like if it wasn't for him bro who's to fucking even say that i would even pursue rapping or even be sitting in this chair right now bro like someone's music changed my whole fucking existence and that's like a huge responsibility to carry on somebody's shoulders and now you can do that for other people and that's and that's like the full circle moment because i got his tattoo and now someone's hitting me up and they're like yo we got an ak-40 Devin tattoo and like that's one of many to come that's a big responsibility, but that's what I want to do for my son. When I look at him, I'm like, yo, I want you to... So the thing is about my dad, right? I love my dad to fucking death. But like, when I look at my son and I want him to look at me, I want him to be like, yo, like, this motherfucker, like, changed the fucking world, yo. God damn, yo. Like, my dad just had a job. And the thing is, I could see as an early adolescent, and I think a lot of kids can relate to this, they're whoever mom or dad gets home from their job and they just fucking hate it right like you could just tell you just get that energy and that's no disrespect to anybody because now that i'm a grown adult i could see the responsibility and everything that goes into having a household and running it and managing it but you feel that when people hate their fucking job bro it makes you lifeless and that's kind of why i escaped to the music scene at like 13 14 and i wanted to pursue this because i told myself like i never want to like feel like that your slave at that point yeah they it didn't them don't teach you or at least in my experience that work can be fun or enjoyable it's supposed to be work exactly you're supposed to be miserable but that would that would mean that work in life or work and passion or work and hobby are two different or all different things which they're not exactly work is life and you bring that home so in your case that's what happen in my case as well you know you bring that energy home and that's the shift of like the youtube bro like that's what that's making and it's making everybody realize like yo like naval ravikan said it he's like the information age is gonna reverse the industrial age and when i tell that to someone like my dad he's like ah shut the fuck up they're gonna be working at the fucking factory forever it's like no they're gonna replace those with robots and they're gonna rely on entertainers and comedians and shit like that to entertain humans Half the human's going to be in the Oculus. The other half are going to be out in the world enjoying the shit. (laughs) So you're about this, you know, you're thinking Grow Rich, the Bob Proctor, the manifestation. But how how far ahead have you looked? Like, what are you seeing for yourself on the horizon? Are you you in that mindset or you're like, I'm just going to let it come to me? 
I just have no limit on my thinking and my imagination, bro. Like, just because I'm thriving as a videographer and a director right now doesn't mean that by the time I'm 32, 33, 34, I'm selling Madison Square Garden. Mm. That's just where I'm at, bro. Like, I could be anything, bro. Like, Kanye West, bro, watch his documentary. This motherfucker now in 2000, what, 19, 20, like, he wanted to run as the president. And people could say, oh, blah, 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 like, talk all this shit or whatever. But it's like, yo, this motherfucker wanted to take on the responsibility of being the rep- the president respect that guy yo and does he know did he know exactly what he was getting into we don't know but. definitely not but who does <laughs> exactly yeah, really who does only the people that are there right and man what a position but yeah man i don't i don't once again is too like sorry like i don't know like i don't know what's to come because videography found me so like i don't know like what down the the road is like gonna like find me and like i'm gonna like like and, and enjoy mm. it'd be anything it'd be podcasting dude who fucking knows well i think you should get I mean, <laughs> you know every artist that comes on the show tells me that they want to start one right like, hell yeah everybody wants to start one but nobody wants to i mean it's hard that's the thing you know it's hard it's a lot of it's work hard, to do bro. this and you have to really want it like i really want like hey you know for people for you listening right now thank you because this is a lot of work to put this together and i like every man i have people we have people every week that listen every week that's crazy to me Hell but yeah. i'm putting in all the work i'm trying to make it as good as i can and i'm every week i'm tweaking and adjusting and clips and video and, cl- and this and audio and compressors and you know trying to figure it out but it's just crazy to me that somebody would trade that time but you have to put it out there first like I'm four years in almost in May. I'm four years in in May. Have I done four years worth of work? No, I've probably done like two. But this is a... I don't expect results for 10. Like yeah, the, that's fair. But I don't care about the about that. Like, I, I have little results that I'm going to set, you know? Um, little little goals that I'm going to set for this. I already have a goal for this podcast. A thousand monthly listeners. We're not there yet. But we're going to be there. We're at a thousand every three months, you know. So I want a thousand a month. Cool. Why do I want that for people listening, thinking that might be an arbitrary number? Because I believe in the concept of a thousand true fans, and I know that we have a tribe of a thousand. We can do whatever we want to do. We can exactly. We bro. can we can get a new studio. We can have as many guests as we want. We can have whoever we want. We could buy a new microphone we can improve we can try different things we can start a different show we can do anything we want you know so i have goals but i think that a lot of people um jump into things and just don't really realize like the gravity dude video work editing i show up to the wedding dude and i talk on the microphone and i put the equipment back and i go home and i lay on my couch i don't have to edit like people don't there's always a backside to all this stuff right you know that you don't see but even this bro there's so much that goes behind the scenes that like you just saw us spending 30 minutes to put it's every time every time something happens a gopro or whatever you know yeah bro and that's what comes with it bro and the people that succeed like they just really have the heart and the strength and like the dedication to like just persevere through all those tough times bro like i've had we've all had times where like we all could have quit like we all have like these moments where it's like maybe i shouldn't be doing this but like that's up for like that belief in you like you have to believe in yourself so much that it's like yo like that happened for a good reason i'm gonna keep going i don't know anything about your job that you had or the the pizza place job but don't but you must be facing a lot harder challenges now right in what you're doing now or is it all relative yeah well bro never having a steady income is always a challenge right like and i was getting paid every day and i was getting paid good fucking money like i still Maybe in this business, I'm, like, catching up and making more now. But, like, bro, I was getting paid good. I was managing the whole pizzeria. I was going to Restaurant Depot, like, two to three times a week. I was getting tips, bro. And just from making, like, all that money every week to, like, then, like, just having zero. And, like, I'm relying on, like, Uber Eats and DoorDash, bro. Like, that shit, that shit changes you. But I encourage it to a lot of my friends. And I encourage it to the listeners because you, like those opportunities got to come to you and those ideas got to come to you and they're not going to come to you if you're like complacent and comfortable at your job like you could always do more your boss nonetheless is like he's using you for his dream and there's nothing wrong with that because you sign up for that but you have to understand that 
If you put in the amount of effort and energy that your boss did, you could have your own fucking empire just like a pizza shop or a fucking smoke shop or a music thing. It's all about how much energy and effort you want to put into something. Like, you don't know about those things until you stop, right? And you're like, yo, like, now I got all this time. What could I do with it? A lot. So shout out to COVID, yo. Nobody's ever said that. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. We'll we'll edit that out. The haters gonna be mad, but I started a business in COVID. But I had COVID though. That's the that's the that's the oh, fucked up thing. Oh, I see thing. what like, you're saying. Like yes. I actually had it. Shout out to you. And then I was Good like, thing you got COVID, dude. Uh, Holy shit! I was like one of the first ones to have it. It was like February, or March. I was like done. I was like, yo, I'm gonna fucking die. This is COVID shit. The news is saying it's the deadliest disease of the century. What the fuck do I do now? I got a baby right here. I got COVID. What the fuck? But I lived. And you lived to tell the tale today, Devin. Bro, hell yeah, man. Hell Dude. fucking yeah. Thanks for coming. Let's get it. This is a wrap. Yeah, it's AK40 Devin. Yeah, follow me on all platforms. Instagram, YouTube. I don't use Twitter, but I post like once every six, seven, eight months. AK40 Devin official. You need music videos. You need... Anything video-wise for your business, for your brand, anything like that, live events, we got it all. Sound Sick Productions, hit me up. Songs, albums, live performances, all on the show. Album notes. coming soon, yo. April 29th, we have Feet Music Hall. Maybe Sully Bob could be there and DJ. We haven't talked about that, but we're going to talk about it. We'll mention it. We'll give them the gas money. If you want to see Sully Bob DJ, April 29th at Feet Music Hall, hit him up in the Instagram DMs right now. Bop on the drop, baby. DJ Sully B in the building. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Bopcast. Really appreciate you tuning in. And as you know, we are on all platforms, even the ones nobody uses. AK-40 yeah, yeah. Devin. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you, bro. You're the best. Yeah, this guy's fucking great. Yeah, he's doing a great job. All right, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.